Hey guys, this is Firm, and uh, today I'm going to be showing you how to make that transformer effect that you just saw in that intro that I made. Uh, first off, I'd like to thank Justin at C40Toots for allowing me to post this to his channel. And yeah, let's uh, jump right into it. So, uh, open up Cinema 40. Gotta wait for mine to load. And add a mo text object. It, it doesn't really matter, but I just like to use mo text. Middle. Um, this works better with, or it works the best with very l few number of uh, characters. So for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use one letter. And uh, make sure that the font you guys are using is relatively blocky, because you don't want too many. Uh, complex edges and stuff it, because it's just gonna get really hard to work with and it's gonna confuse the heck out of you guys so uh... make it kinda thick it'll add to the effect and make it look better and then name this something along the lines of original because it will have meaning and it will help you later fail alright so now what you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna make this editable right click select children make editable again right click select children right click connect and delete and if you do that properly in that order it should uh, turn your object white which is what you want and now go up to functions and then hit optimize and then hit ok and now it's ready to be uh, cut up so let's see go into your front view zoom in so you can see it better and uh, what you're going to want to do is go to your selection tool and then go to structure, I'm oh, sorry, and then go to your uh, polygon selection tool, then go to structure, and then go to knife. Make sure line is set, it should be default. Make sure visible only is checked. And that's about it right there. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to uh, segment your text into multiple pieces. I'm going to use squares, but you can, you know, kind of make it abstract and do, you know, shards or whatever you want. So, that looks good right there, but if you notice, if you go into your other view, you can see that it, it only uh, affected the front. The sides or the back are completely unscathed. So now, I suggest you stay back in this view and kind of zoom in and get a projection like that so you can see both sides. And then scroll over this, this uh, intersection right here where the line you drew intersects the actual text outline and uh, if you get close enough a little white ball will appear that's highlighted so uh, click and then click again when it's about uh, level you can just eyeball it. it doesn't have to be exact and just do that for everything you see on all sides of this text so see there shouldn't be any there there's one on top right there there is one right there Now let's get right there. Now let's get the back side. See how it's kind of a uh, off level. Don't worry about that. It will kind of adds to the uniqueness, I guess you could say. It it doesn't make it look bad. Just put it that way. And make sure that they're all matched up perfectly. And double and triple check to make sure that you have all of your points done. Because I always forget some. But just look around, make sure. Alright, looks good. So now, what you're going to want to do is go to your selection tool. Make sure your, uh, your uh, polygon face selection tool is selected. And then just go ahead and start uh, selecting all the faces of each individual box or segment, depending on what you're making. And once again, double and triple check to make sure that you're getting all the segments. I always forget them. And right there, I add an extra one on accident. So I'm just going to hit Control Z, go down and reselect it. And that looks good for that one. So now go to Functions, Split, and then name this Part 1. Because there's going to be a lot of these and it's going to get very confusing. Now uh, go to your original. Make sure your selection tool is selected. Now hit Delete. And it it doesn't look like it did much, but it actually deleted this first part. So now if I hide this, 
there's just an empty space. Now hit MD on your keyboard, which brings up the uh, close polygon tool, which will kind of patch all of your holes. If the keyboard shortcut isn't working, you can just go up here to structure and then close polygon hole, uh, hole tool. So now uh, make the original invisible and make the part one vis uh, visible. So now go down and all of these parts until the final one should have a, a hole opening. So always look for them. And then uh, just mend that hole. Go back to your original, make this invisible, make that visible, and uh, repeat the process. So select all the faces of uh, the next box. And it, it's, a, it's a time consuming process, guys, but it pays off in the end. It calls for a really nice effect, and it's not, it's not complex by any means. So functions, split, name it part two, go to your original, make sure the selection tool is on, hit delete, make part two invisible, hit MD, close that, make your original invisible, make your part two visible, select it, and then mend the other hole, make it invisible again, make this visible, and select it, and then go to your polygon selection tool again and do it all again and make sure you hit every single one functions split part three make it invisible select the original hit delete and uh... see sometimes guys you're gonna get these little lines right here these stray lines sorry about that uh... don't worry about it though what you're going to want to do is go to your selection tool. If it's a line, hit the line selection tool. Select them and then hit delete. If it's a, uh, a little point in space, just grab your vertice selection tool. See, there's a bunch, but I'm not going to worry about them because they won't affect anything. So uh, now hit MD. Mend that hole. And if you note, let me uh, control Z to show you guys. There's two holes right now, so if I hit mend, it's going to cover both of them. But... It doesn't show it, but uh, it actually made these into one polygon, so you're going to have to go back to your structure, knife, and make a, a new cut, because otherwise it will just be as one, one polygon, and it will mess everything up. So back to your selection tool, uh, select a another box, make sure you get all the points, and just hold down shift and drag to cover a lot of area. Functions, split, part four, make it invisible, select the original, hit delete, hit MD, oh wait, it's already mended so we don't need to do it. Now make this invisible, make this visible. It should already be mended because we did that step and it is, so we're good there. Make this invisible again, make it visible. Go to your selection tool, select your second to last box, hit functions, split, whoa, I just named that part 45, I meant part 5, make uh, this invisible, go to your original, hit delete, MD, close that, make that invisible, make that visible, now there should be a hole on here somewhere, right there, it's already on the close loop button so let's click that now make this invisible and your original is uh, the final part so just go ahead and name it part six now what you're going to want to do is uh, make all of your parts visible again and you should have a seamless text object and it looks just like your original one so go to your uh, projection views and zoom in on your top and front so it increases your accuracy and uh, what you're going to want to do now is select each one, go to your, uh, this basically lets you drag the center of the object around so it can, so you can basically tell the computer where the center of the object is. So uh, as you can see, part one is this top right hand part. So you're going to want to go to your move tool, <coughs> drag that up, drag it to the right till it's approximately in the center, and then width-wise drag it to the center and then move on to the next part that's the top left one so we're gonna do that and then move that to the center part three 
do that. And you can see now, guys, how this is very tedious and kind of annoying. Don't you love when you get a bunch of Skype calls? Yeah, I just love that. Or messages. It's awesome. And now your final piece, uh, shouldn't be, you shouldn't be able to see which one it is, so you're going to have to kind of do some detective work and figure it out. So it's this bottom piece. And there's that. So that part's done. Now with each piece, come here and hit the, uh, just, this allows you to kind of move it around again without it being editable. So, do that for all of them. And then, uh, what you're going to want to do now is select all of your parts, go to the key, go to the frame where you want, uh, everything to stop, where you want all the, the text uh, parts to come together and form the actual text. I'm gonna want that at frame, uh, say 110, or let's make it even, say 100. So now I just hit the uh, add keyframe button, and that'll add a keyframe for all six parts. Now go to frame, you know, 50. It doesn't matter. This is totally opinion based. What you want to do. So uh, now you just kind of grab it and kind of throw it around in a random way, you know, and then rotate it a lot. And just the more kind of random it looks the better you want that natural look so then go to your other part and throw it about somewhere and spin it up add keyframe and you're gonna want to do this for all your parts and kind of a uh, spread the area where they're coming from a great distance you don't want them all to be coming from the same general area so Kind of mix it a, around a bit. And yeah. Make sure you get some going down, some going up. And more rotation, kind of the better. Add keyframe. And our final piece, let's just get a little 360 view to see where the majority of these going. And mix it up. Let's put it over here. And hit our keyframe button. Now let's go back to our kind of front view, I guess. And watch the animation through. And as you can see, they all come together and form the text. Now this is just a very basic animation, guys. You can spend a lot of time lining them up and making sure they don't overlap and uh, all that good stuff. And now, uh, if you want to add a kind of an extra layer to it, you can kind of move this a little bit back so it starts towards the beginning of your animation. And then, with all these selected, hit Alt G on your keyboard, and that'll put them all into one null object. Double click that, just name it uh, text. Now, with this, you can make it so, let's see, right there, a little bit before, I want it to come to that angle. So right here, I want it, you know, you can make it do it. You can make all the objects spin in a really cool fashion. This really makes it look nice, guys. So hit Add Keyframe, and then if you watch it, they'll move around in kind of a orbit around a central point, and it gives it a really nice effect. And, uh... That's essentially all you need to know. I mean, the rest is up to you. You can, you know, deviate and elaborate off what I've showed you and, you know, make it your own. So, I hope all of you guys found this tutorial helpful. And, uh, subscribe if you liked it. Yeah. Later, guys.